Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find a marked angle in a triangle, but it's a special problem where it happens to involve a fraction, which um, throws a lot of students off. So let's see how we can set up and solve an equation with the least amount of pain possible when it involves a fraction. So the diagram we are given has three angles because it's a triangle, and we know that um, the interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. Whenever you see a diagram with three marked angles inside of a triangle, you're going to uh, use the fact that the sum of the three angles, in this case angle A, angle B, and angle C, is going to add up to 180 degrees. All right, now angle A is marked as x minus 16, and angle B is marked as 2x minus 141, and angle C is marked as 1 half x plus 8. So we're going to add those together, and they have to add up to 180 degrees. All right, now the next step is usually to combine like terms. That just means put the terms with x's together and the constant terms together. By the way, terms are just things that are separated by a plus or minus. So each of these underlined uh, expressions is a term. So we're going to put together the terms that have x's in them and the terms that don't have x's with them are separate because they're not like terms. So x plus 2x plus 1 half x, think of adding those together, plus we have negative 16, negative 141, and a positive 8. We're going to add those together. I'm going to drop the degree symbol till the end of the problem. The way that we combine like terms is to add the number in the front of the variable, which is called a coefficient. The term that's just x has an invisible 1 in front of it. So if we're going to add 1x and 2x, we're going to get 3x. But a lot of people don't like adding fractions, so I'm not going to add the 1 half x. I'm going to show you a trick to get out of having to do that part. And then, uh, but I am going to add together uh, negative 16, negative 141, and 8, and that's going to add up to negative 149. Okay, now the next step I'm going to do is to get rid of any fractions that are in my equation by multiplying through by the denominator. So you see how we have a denominator of 2 in the bottom of that fraction? So what we can do is to multiply by 2 on each side of the equation. And watch what happens when we do that. So if I distribute the 2 on the left, you have to distribute it to each term. This is called the distributive property. Then we would get 6x plus, now I'm just going to write 2 times a half for a minute, x, and come back to that, minus 2 times 149 is going to be 298. And then on the right we have 180 times 2, which is 360. Okay, let's talk off to the side about what is 2 times 1 half. So remember, any whole number can be written as a fraction by thinking of it as being over 1. 2 is the same as 2 over 1. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. A lot of people think that they have to do something fancy when they multiply, but you don't. You just go straight across. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 over 2 is the same as 1. So you see how this 2 times a half x is just going to become 1x or x, so we no longer have a fraction. That's kind of the magic of multiplying both sides by the denominator in an equation. You can only do this because we're working in an equation, by the way. You can't multiply by 2 anytime you want to clear a fraction. But when you have an equation, we can multiply anything we want as long as we multiply on both sides to keep the balance. Okay, so now I'm going to add 6x and 1x, and that's going to be 7x minus 298 equals 360. Now get x by itself. So I'm going to add 298 to both sides. So that's going to give me 7x equals, and we're going to have 658. And then we're going to, since 7 is being multiplied by the x, we're going to have to reverse that by dividing by 7, and we have to keep the balance, so we do that on both sides of the equal sign. So we're going to have x equals, and then 7 goes into 658 94 times, so x is equal to 94. Now we're almost done, not quite, because 
Remember, we were not asked to find x, we were asked to find the measure of each marked angle. So now we're gonna have to take the value that we found for x and plug it in. So angle A is gonna be 94 minus 16, which is gonna be 78 degrees. Angle B is going to be two times 94 minus 141. That's gonna be 188 minus 141, which is 47 degrees. And then angle C is going to be one half times 94 plus eight. How do you do half of 94? Remember, one half times 94 over one is the same as one half times 94. Multiplying straight across, you just get 94 over two. 94 divided by two is going to be 47. So we have 47 plus eight, which is equal to 55 degrees. And then what could you do just to check to make sure your answers are reasonable? One thing you could do is we know that all of these angles are supposed to add up to 180 degrees. So let's just check that they do. What would 78 degrees plus 47 degrees plus 55 degrees add up to? So 78 plus 47 is gonna be 125. And then if we add 55 to that, we do get 180. So it seems like the angles we found, 78, 47, and 55, are reasonable answers. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.